Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cobus Clips uh, live stream. Happy to have you. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. All the way. Hope you're all doing. Uh, hope you're all doing well and keeping safe uh, during this kind of weird time that we're in. Be sure to wear your masks and you know keep keep uh, keep safe, everyone. Uh, we've got a really really interesting show today. We've got Matt Summers who is the uh, Senior Creative Director for Klipsch. And we also have Mark Cassavant, who's the Senior VP of Global, Global and Brand Development. Uh, both of these guys are so much fun to talk to, and they're just so much, they're, they've got just so much really cool information. Well, we're here, um, these guys are great partners of CoBuzz. If you don't know about CoBuzz, we're a, a streaming service um, that does uh, full and high resolution uh, streaming. Uh, we've got about 2 million or better cuts actually now um, in high res. And then I guess it's around 50 or 52 million songs that you can uh, that you can stream and make your system sound better than it's ever sounded, especially if you're on, you know, incredible speakers like Klipsch. Um, well, also, we're going to be adding a segment this uh, this show um, because really we are all about the music. So we're going to, uh, we're going to have Su Jan Hong come on. She is our music, uh, merchandiser and she's the, the, the lady does a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff that you see, uh, on CoBuzz and a whole lot of the, um, the, uh, playlist that you see that she's responsible for all of that stuff. Um, so we're going to have Sue Jan on for a little bit. She's going to tell us um, she's going to tell us about some of the new music that we're getting in this week. And we're going to start having Sue Jan on uh, every every uh, every time we do a live stream just to give us a little bit of that inside uh, information. I'd like to thank Dan Matka. He's our managing director. Dan has been producing these shows for the last, I guess, four or five. Uh, so thanks very much to Dan. Uh, Nitha, thank you very much for all of your help. Nitha is, just came on board with us, uh, although she's been here for uh, for a while um, as an intern. We've, we've just uh, officially hired her. She's absolutely wonderful. We've just got a great team of folks, including our, uh, our uh, customer service manager, Ken Richards. Thank you very much for everything that you do. So without further ado, let's bring on uh, Matt Summers and Mark Cassidy from Klipsch. <laughs> I thought we were doing the Hot for Teacher video. Sorry. <laughs> Hey man, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm digging the fish eye. That that is really cool, Matt. I did not realize, buddy. This is a total surprise. I didn't realize you had a, a kit behind you as well. Oh yeah, it's a little uh, Gretsch Blackhawk. Uh, I just picked up last year. Um, I got a little ten inch snare. I'm playing with it. I like a little tiny kit, but it's a uh, it, it's pretty bombastic. It's a great stress relief. Man, I can so <laughs> relate with that. We're gonna have to do something with Mark. Mark, how are you doing? Awesome. It's another beautiful day in Indianapolis. Oh, well, gosh, thanks for uh, thank you guys for joining us. You've been just awfully, um, awfully great partners. And, and we just love working with you guys. Uh, Dan and I actually got a chance to come and visit uh, you guys up in Indianapolis last year. Yeah. And we I got to tell you, we have talked about this trip probably 20 times. So it's just been eight. It was one of the the best trips I've, I've ever taken. It's so much fun. We got to get, we got to go around and see how things were were made and produced, and um, uh, a l whole lot of the history behind the company, which is absolutely fascinating. So I do have a question for you because, um, you know, I, I I listen to what you guys say. You know, I, th I think you guys know what you're talking about. So, and, and I told you about this. So I want to I want to talk about this. Um, so I put, uh, in the, in the header or in one of the invites or something, uh, I put, uh, world's oldest speaker company. Now, now when was a speaker company? When did you guys found, were founded? When were you founded? 46, 1946 was when Clipson Associates was founded. 1946. And so I had a few people going, Hey, you know, that's not the first speaker company. There was, uh, you know, JBL and, uh, uh, who else was there? They, Jensen and a couple of others. And I, I started researching it and I go, well, they may have been in business by that time, but did they have commercially available product? Is that, is that what we're talking about when we say the world's, uh, oldest speaker brand? Well, go ahead, Mark. 
Well, I was just going to say we have operated independently since the beginning. I mean, we, we, uh, we're, we're now part of a public uh, company, but we are operating as we originally have under the founding of Paul Klipsch. And I, I don't know if we need to debate this, but let's just put it this way. We have remained true to our principles since day one. So yeah. I, I would say one of the oldest and longest standing original hi-fi companies at the birth of the hi-fi industry. I like to describe it as uh, true pioneers, the original pioneers of the hi-fi industry. Um, and also, you know, next year being our 75th anniversary for Klipsch, um, it'll be the 75th anniversary of the Klipsch horn, which is the longest continuous production loudspeaker in the history of audio. So that's we're very, very proud of that speaker. Yeah, that's that, that that is the, that's the record breaking audio industry shattering record right there. Yeah, when we were uh, when we were in Indianapolis, uh, Mark took us through um, a lot of the pictures and a lot of the history um, of the of the first speakers being built. And the museum is unbelievable. I love all of the old little artifacts that you guys have got uh, that you guys have got going on there. And yeah, Paul Phillips was a total innovator. And I am I don't think you can, I don't think that there is another speaker out there that you can go, uh, well, this is the way the speakers were designed from con at, from the very beginning, because really they are almost exactly the same as, as they were to begin with, right? We're on, we're on version, version six, AK six is the, the version of the clip shore now. And there have been uh, significant modifications over the years, but fundamentally the way that it works being a fully horn loaded system um, has not changed over the years. So that's something that, that we're very proud of. But yeah, Paul had, was on to something. And when that lightning struck and he said, you know, this is the way I want to, uh, uh, it was all about efficiency for him. So when he hit upon that, I think uh, the world uh, kind of stood up and listened. So yeah. I, have to, I have to add this, Dave, you know, by the way, we're thrilled to be partnering with Cobuzz with the Heritage Dealer Program. And it goes back to Paul Klipsch being a musician. And, you know, it's funny because you guys have your drums there. I have drums throughout the house. Uh, this is one room where I don't have any. But uh, he, he had this ear that could not be satisfied with any of the equipment back then. And it was his perfection, his, his you know, right brain, left brain, his creative musician side, his engineering side, rare talent where they're combined, and his really obsession to make it much better home audio reproduction that really replicated the live musical experience. And I think he'd be thrilled with how things have come along with high resolution recording and then offering it, making it easy to obtain and utilize and what Cobuzz is doing. So this is, this is the full circle that we have, uh, we really appreciate. Yeah, we, we, we dig it too. I mean, it, it's, uh, uh, you, you guys are such an iconic company and really do hold so much history in the palm of your hand. Um, I just think it's, it's incredible. And um, when Dan and I were, were at Cliff, in fact, before I even go there, there might be, <laughs> I, probably not, but there might be a couple of people that don't really know a lot about Klipsch. So uh, Matt was good enough to to send a couple of a uh, couple of pictures that I that I'd like to that I'd like to put up and and with the first one being um, if you've never seen Paul Clips you'd be quite a snazzy dresser uh, <laughs> Dan uh, can you uh, can you pull up the the slides of uh, of Paul please uh, but yeah we were there and and, and Mark was showing us all of the um, uh, all of all of Paul's little stuff that he that he used to carry around, and he showed me a button that I think Matt has actually got one right now it's because he was we can like get one of these up there. Can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. unofficial so, company motto. Yeah, well, you, you kind of made it official there, Mister Summers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that's well, a, you know, everybody dressed very classy back then. You know, it's not like today where it's pretty cash, but. You know, Paul Klipsch, he was a gentleman. You know, he he uh, he flew his plane. He made lots of visits. He was the sales uh, division of the company. I mean, he was everything. He yeah, was yeah, the, he was, the, he was the, everything. He was like the the engineer, uh, uh, builder, 
designer, salesperson. He, yeah, he, yeah, he kind of did everything. Advertiser and marketer as well. He took his own photos for the, the first five years of the company. He would uh, build his own horns out of resin and then put them on his front porch and set up his camera and take pictures and build his own catalogs from it. We still have printing plates from a lot of that stuff. That's incredible. That's incredible. You guys have got some of the biggest fan base uh, out there that I've ever seen. But just in case people don't know what Klipsch is all about, can we can we talk a little bit about a couple of the design principles like um, the 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 super high efficiency, high resolution, um, low distortion? Because really, if you think about it, all of those things are are very important in today's world as well. So this guy was not just some guy throwing a couple of speakers and boxes. I mean, he was, Mr. Klipsch was making um, product that is so relevant for today, even today's market. Yeah, it's definitely time tested, everything that he has done. And what he established then with a groundbreaking product like the Klipsch horn and then subsequently La Scala, you know, a lot of the heritage products that we are still making today through the 50s and 60s, even did his own stereo recordings. He had live musicians in Hope, Arkansas, had a state-of-the-art recording studio, had uh, young engineers uh, under his tutelage, such as John Ergel, you know, who went on to uh, be with JBL. So, you know, pretty legendary people uh, um, around him. But what he established for the industry then, and he made a lot of impact with people that we know, their brands, Saul Morantz, Avery Fisher, um, these guys that were making amplifiers, you know, he identified types of distortion. He did so much research with his transducers uh, and his speaker systems. He, he really got into uh, the various forms of distortion that really were deleterious and took away from a, a great uh, sound system. And, you know, everybody had their um, heads around um, total harmonic distortion but he really uh, was a pioneer in discovering and, and really kind of um, making it more of a, a design goal to achieve uh, much less modulation distortion, transient intermodulation distortion, things that the human ear really picked up on with a system that was trying to reproduce the dynamics of live performance but fell short. So he did discover ultimately this correlation between efficiency in a loudspeaker system and distortion and the inverse relationship. And, you know, he, he later, he, he, he qualified it with the more efficient a system is, the more quality it is. And, you know, one of the few speaker companies that, you know, at the core of our design philosophy and language, and that's every product we make today, is low distortion, minimizing distortion to the point where it's not a distraction. It's not a reminder that you're listening to an audio reproduction system our goal is to absolutely recreate the live musical experience. So distortion, efficiency, the result being fantastic dynamic range, uh, unheard of dynamic range uh, that really could reproduce the full output of a symphony orchestra. One clip horn was designed to do that. Back then it was mono. I'm, I'm doing the speed talk right now, <laughs> have you noticed? And then when stereo came out, you could actually reproduce the three-dimensional effect of placing the instruments along with that even greater dynamic range. And we were talking with five watts of power back then, you know, a five watt power amp was a lot of power back then. Then of course, more power comes along, even greater dynamic range, less distortion. Um, and then of course, with the high sensitivity of the clip horn, about 105 decibels uh, at, with one watt, uh, 2.83 volts uh, really into the, the impedance. And then of course, at a meter, um, 105 watts, you know, with, sorry, 105 decibels with one watt, you know, it, with 10 watts, you've got plenty of dynamic range, dynamic headroom. So with 20 watts, 40 watts, 80 watts, 100 watts, you got plenty of dynamic headroom. So you can reproduce effortlessly the dynamic range of a live performance today uh, with our product with, with very quality, lower powered amplifiers. You don't have to go gonzo with the amp power. And there are other aspects, the controlled reactivity of the horn loaded design, which you can see the fives here right behind me. Some of our latest products obviously use our horn loaded design. And then um, the, the result of controlled reactivity, putting the sound into a controlled delivery pattern into the optimum listening area minimizes reflections. So you actually, the, the last element would be flat response, not just in an anechoic chamber, but in an actual room 
because you're not aggravating reflections. You're going to get a smooth power response in your listening position, your optimum listening position, and everyone will hear a nice sound stage. But we're not sending sound here, here, you know, unless, of course, you have a, a, a home theater system, you want it everywhere. But for two channel, you know, a very defined pattern and then in room response is natural and balanced. And he was doing that in 1946. Think about that. That that's when when you think about it, it boggles the mind a little bit. I, and, I, and I, I have and I'm sorry, Matt, go ahead. That's okay. And David, one other thing I would add, when, since we're talking about high resolution audio, is if you go all the way back to the beginning, um, Edward Ar Edward Armstrong, who invented FM stereo, one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, first demonstrated it on a clip horn. And after that demonstration, what was really cool was Paul Klipsch came back and he said, we've got to get better source material. There's nobody out there that's providing, we've either got vinyl or we've got you know, the tape or we've got uh, FM stereo, we've got to get better source material. So he was begging for that to show what the Klipsch horn was capable of you know, 75 years ago. And so now we've finally arrived at the place. I just can imagine what he would think today, um, being able to have the convenience of, of pulling up from your phone or your oh. computer and being able to have high resolution audio that really demonstrate what the speakers can actually do. Guys, I'm just glad we're alive right now. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe it because I mean, I really did think that this yeah. was going to happen 10 or 15 years ago, but, um, I'm still pinching myself every time I open Cobus and, and the, the latest, you know, 300 albums are there and about 80% of them are in high resolution. And I feel exactly the same way. What if people like, you know, Saul Morantz or Paul Klipsch or, you know, some of these just total icons that really help define our industry. What would they think if they could, if, if they could live now and see what we're doing we were talking about this yesterday. Can you believe the quality of recordings that are coming out in the last four or five years? It's like the engineers have finally just figured it out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. You know, and I've got, you see behind me, you know, I've had a little home recording studio as you have in your, in your home for, for forever. And, you know, I started off on the Fostex four track that's sitting behind me. Um, and where you is were that fighting. Little, is that a little cassette? Guy? A little cassette, yeah, oh, a little I flat cassette. Oh, yeah. I still they got were mine. They so cool. It was functional. like a mini little uh, uh, yeah. 3340 S or something, right? <laughs> right, right. But you were fighting, you know, the whole time you're fighting for noise floor. Sure. Because there's hiss and all, you know, we had DBX and, you know, Dolby came along and all that. But, uh, you know, nowadays, just the clarity of, of what you're able to on the input side of stuff, especially if you're using, you know, large diaphragm condenser microphones and even, you know, electronic music that's never even touches an analog source. Insane playback capability. Yeah. How about uh, we were we were talking about we've actually had a bunch of conversations around this whole thing. So we're now kind of just letting you in on these conversations that we've had. Uh, and one of them was around, uh, obviously, uh, clips taking being able to take full advantage of the resolution that we're providing at, yeah. at, at Cobuzz. Yeah. And then we then we start, you know, Mark and Matt and myself, we tend to, if there is a rabbit hole anywhere around, <laughs> we will go down it. So we were talking about this and we're going, could you imagine what like a group like Led Zeppelin would sound <sighs> like if they were being recorded today? With uh, a proper <laughs> with a proper kick drum mic. And, and a guy, you know, I mean, I, I will say that, you know, we, we know Eddie Kramer, you know, and, and he did a wonderful job with Led Zeppelin too, but by today's standards, you know, and, and the digital resolution to match what those guys were delivering acoustically, holy cow. Would Let's mention you need more than four tracks too. more. You need more than four <laughs> tracks. Having four or eight tracks is good, but you know, a couple hundred is excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, just the just the raw capability of uh, of dynamic range and 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 no noise for these days just is something that, from an engineering standpoint, a lot of us audiophiles, I, I see a lot of arguments on the on um, on the internet. It's like, oh, can you hear the difference between sixteen and twenty four bit? No, you can't. Um, you know, if you're like in an absolute, completely theoretical world, it might be a little closer. But if you ask any recording engineer worth their salt, they'll tell you a 24-bit on the recording side is crucial. 
because at least at that point, even if you're not peaking it out, you can still get, if you're a bad recording engineer, you can get 16 bits out of 24. If you're pretty good, you get 18 or 20, right? Not that there aren't wonderful, wonderful 16 bit recordings. There are, um, but you know, just the capability we have of recording today, we're seeing about 80% of the stuff that we get from Cobuzz in high resolution uh, these days, which is, it's just remarkable because just very few years ago, not many people were recording in, in, in high resolution. Their computers just wouldn't handle it. It was mm -hmm. not enough space, not enough speed, well, but now it's I have all to say up with each other. Dave, at these trade shows, you know, um, <laughs> everybody would tease me about the CDs I would burn for everybody, you know, for some handpicked music that I knew would perform. And um, now it, it's just, it's been a blessing to have uh, Cobas where on the fly, if somebody has a request, we may play it, you know, but to hear such subtlety and detail in our demos, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's loud. No, 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 we're not about loud. We're about dynamic. And we're also about that that emotional energy that happens when the dynamics stop and it's quiet and then the subtlety, and then when it kicks back in, you know, it, that's what live music does to you. It, it literally moves you and shakes you. And somebody asked, I, I saw it earlier, what does Cobas and Klipsch have in common? And I can tell you if, if there was one word, I, I would think headroom because, you know, a lot of people think, Hey, you know, I have so many watts. Do I need all this wattage for clips? Well, no, but you want it. Yeah, and I then love headroom. <laughs> just like 24 bit. Do you need it? You want it. You want that headroom. You want that. You don't want to have to squeeze the audio spectrum, the dynamics, like and fit it in. You want extra room to breathe. And that's exactly what a clip system does for you. It gives you extra room to breathe. If you want to turn it up, a good, a properly set up clip system will taunt you to turn up the volume because it's so clean. That's that's what gets a little crazy. It, who who has been in their car driving home from work or after, you know, at night somewhere, you crank it up, you mm, kind of goes up, you know, by the time you get home you're like, yeah, that was, that was fun drive home. The next morning you get in, you hear the volume that you were listening to last and you're like, wow, that was I was cranking it. It's just <laughs> like that with a good setup at home, home theater where it's clean and then you're enjoying it, and then you forget about what's around you. You just get lost in the experience. So headroom, that would be my answer to that. Yeah, I would I would piggyback on that just from a dynamic range st standpoint. You don't know how loud something is until you hear quiet, and you don't know how quiet it is until you hear loud. And so the broader that dynamic range, the more that you can fill that with excitement. And I love that that um, up and down really is is what is makes me passionate about music um, you know being able to to listen to somebody that has produced a, a beautiful piece where you're listening so intently and then in, when it gets intense it gets even more intense because the dynamic range in the headroom is there to go and you mentioned contrast and isn't that the rage with video right now hdr the contrast the difference between the blacks and the colors and the vibrancy of the screen i mean it's all about dynamics i agree Absolutely. David, David, I would also mention, you know, it's a funny story and Mark and I have laughed about this many times. Uh, there was a, a sort of a trend in the 90s where everyone was talking about their speakers being digital ready. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but it was all the speakers were digital ready. And, you know, when the when the digital revolution happened, these speakers were were uh, able to handle the digital. Klipsch was digital ready in 1946. Um, and I love that about the brand um, because it has always had that ability to reproduce um, the the digital uh, dynamic range that was capable of of digital music. Hey, Mark, we've got a question from one of our uh, from one of our viewers. Travis uh, Williams asked, um, uh, Mark, what kind of what kind of chair do you use when you're when you're setting up a Cobas clip system? What what do you use? I mean, really, that is a good. No, Travis. <laughs> so he's a funny guy. He he he's a he's a dear friend and. Um, He's on our, our uh, heritage board. You know, he, <laughs> I, I can't remember if I told him a story when I was selling Fortes in Florida at our, our small store down there in Florida, uh, an independent audio video custom um, operation. Uh, Roland, if you're listening, you're going to get a chuckle out of this. We had some wicker 
rocking, you know, chairs, you know, typical Florida furniture that we bought as, you know, cause I, I got one and I loved it. So I was like, Hey, Roland, let's get some of these for our listeners so they can sit and they can just chill and lean back, you know, listening to Forte's. So <clears throat> I was doing a demo one day and the, the, the base, they were cheap. They were cheap worker chairs. The bolts ripped out of the base. The customer fell back and I panicked. I was like, Oh my gosh. You know, so they got a deal on those Forte's. And then a week later, another customer, let's just put it this way. All three chairs let go, but we sold, I sold a pair of Forte's to each customer. And it was like, if they sit in that chair, we're going to be selling Forte's. We sold Forte's like popcorn. So if that's the question you're asking, Travis, I'll get you later for that. But I will say that a, a good, you know, reclining chair where you can easily reach for a beverage and you're comfortable and, you know, you, it could make, you could fall asleep, you know, but, but if you're, you know, playing them properly, I mean, I've woke, I've woken at two in the morning sometimes with the system at healthy volume. And I'm just, I took a nap and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so loud. Why haven't the girls like shut me down? But uh, any chair that's comfortable, just don't get too comfortable, my friend. But Travis, I will get you for that question. Uh, <laughs> if it's if it's a wicker rocking chair, check the hardware, make sure it's a quality piece of uh, equipment. If I had to answer that question like for real, because there may be really people that want to know, I've gone through a bunch of them. And one of the things I can tell you is don't try not to get anything that covers your head up here because anything that you have here is going to affect anything that's coming this way. So I, I, I personally, I am really big on this too. I, I never have anything, anything back here. Um, although I know that there's a lot of people that have got those big Eames chairs that, you know, have mm -hmm. become huge or the lobster chairs or whatnot. I don't like any of them because they, they, they change the way the music sounds. And to me, I don't want that extra bit of reflection or absorption, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so, while I'm listening so, to music. so are you saying that if you have hair that is long and it happens to come down over your ears, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Hey buddy, we, <laughs> We like your haircut. It's it it is it's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Hey, listen. Um, before we bring Sue Jan on, uh, we had been talking about um, the clipch horns and the heresies, and I had asked uh, Matt to send over uh, a video, or he said that he had one. Um, uh, Dan, if you'll get that ready, I'd I'd like to show this, and you guys can kind of talk over the video while it's going on but this is a really cool video and it's it's really quick i think it's a two minute thing that shows how the uh the uh la scalas are made from start to finish so it, whatever you guys have got to say about this yeah so this was filmed in our hope arkansas factory uh the same location where eclipse was founded um and i shot this for the al5 uh version of the la scala which was released last year and we wanted to show how you make Lascalas from you know a, a pile of boards basically and components all the way to the final product. Um, and this is really you know compressed. You know it, it takes a, a a good bit of time to actually make the speaker. But we wanted to show sort of the 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 hand working that goes into it, the craftsmen that are involved, um, everything from cutting the wood to sanding the wood um, to installing the components. Um, all of it is just meticulously crafted, uh, and, and each one is uh, uh, completely original and individual um, because it has its own um, its own finish on it. Um, the um, the wrap on it, um, wood veneer, is uh, unique to each individual speaker, and they are book matched, so left and right will match each other. Um, but it's a it's a great process to see that people uh, are still making products this way, um, complete with you know, the installation and the, the testing that goes into it. Um, so we had to make a, a pair of La Scala's for us. And I, you know, I commend the folks at Hope that are just trying to work every day uh, for letting me follow them around with a camera in their face uh, for a couple of days last year. They were very gracious to let me see what they're doing to be able to build the, the speakers. You know, I remember in uh, 91 when I first showed up as a new employee, to Hope, Arkansas, I was floored by, I was looking, where are the speakers? Where are the drivers? Where's the, and then I just saw stacks of wood veneer everywhere. It blew me away. It's a wood shop. It is a custom cabinetry, fine crafts, crafts people, you know, working on 
some of the finest cabinetry, you know, with the, the wood grain matching, how they keep the pairs together. It's an, it's a labor of love truly. And so you guys you know, are still making these in, uh, in, um, in the nope. United States. Yep. In Arkansas. That's Absolutely. Great. We'll make you a pair today if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> I, we were talking about making me a desktop system and you guys know my standards with desktop systems. It's gotta be something really cool. And I actually, uh, I want to take a, uh, I think we still got Sue Jan here. Yeah. I want to, if you guys don't mind, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break. When we come back, um, we're going to go back into a few more of the pictures that you guys sent over. Um, I would like to remind everybody, if you are on CoBuzz, that you can visit uh, the page and simply type in Klipsch. And you'll come up with two really, really good Klipsch playlists. Uh, I, Mark and Matt, uh, and I think Jill, uh, Jill is going to be with us next, uh, next time in a couple of weeks. Uh, but they put this, this playlist together and it is absolutely fabulous. And Mike um, Barato co contributed also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that's great. Thank you very much for, uh, for mentioning Mike. And so with that, I'm going to, we're going to switch a little bit. I'm going to bring you guys back on screen in just, uh, yeah. just a little bit, but we're going to. We're going to um, introduce our music uh, merchandiser right now, Sujan Hong. Hey, Sujan, how are you? Hey, doing well. How are you, David? Good, good. I've asked Sujan, we, we have these meetings every week, and every week Sujan, um, she lets us know what's going on. Like a few, a uh, couple of months ago, she was going, oh, guys, you're never going to believe what's happening. The uh, the new tool, is, we, we're going to have tool. And we're not just going to have tool. We're going to have them in 24192 or 24. I can't remember what it was, but she's she continually keeps us abreast of what's going on. And a, I don't know, maybe it was three or four weeks ago. I'm going, Sujan, could you, could you please, uh, you know, Tell us, get, come on the show and 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 talk a little bit about the music that's coming up. So, uh, Sujan, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to turn this over to you and just let you let everybody know um, uh, maybe a little bit about your background since this is the first time you've done it, and then certainly uh, the the music that that we've got coming up that you uh, think is interesting. Sure. Uh, so, hey, everyone. I'm Su Jan Hong. I'm the director of music merchandising for Kobas US. Um, I have a background in uh, online marketing and working at indie labels. Uh, prior to this, I worked at another DSP. So, you know, it's really exciting to be at Kobas and be able to listen and talk about music all day long and just you know, there's so much great stuff coming out these days. Um, and tomorrow is, you know, just another Friday filled with so much good music. So as David said, the genesis of this was from um, our Thursday weekly team meetings where, you know, I'd kind of give a recap of what was coming up for the week. And so now I'm going to start doing these in these live streams. So uh, I'm going to kick off with our album of the week, which is the third album from a British singer songwriter named Leanne Le Havis. Um, this is her first record in five years. Uh, it's self-produced. It's just so soulful and warming. Um, I mean, if you need comfort right now, this is the album you put on and just kind of escape a little from you know everything that's going on in the world. Um, there's a Radiohead cover. Uh, Prince was a fan, so and a mentor. So I think that probably tells you all you need to know about her. Um, and that is coming out in 24 bit tomorrow. Uh, next up, we have. Uh, the Chicks, the band formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, as you know, uh, but as of a month ago, they're now the Chicks. And this is Gaslighter, um, their first album in 14 years. It is like a firecracker of an album. Uh, it was originally scheduled for release in May, delayed because of uh, the pandemic. But um, it's produced by uh, Jack Antonoff, you know, who does so many other pop stars right now. Um, it's got Chad Smith from Red Hot Chili Peppers on drums, uh, Annie Clark, a.k.a. St. Vincent on guitar. Um, and basically this album was inspired by singer Natalie Maines' divorce. So you've got everything from, you know, wistfulness and, and, and regret and ruining and, and, and rage. I mean, the first song, uh, the title track is just really great. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a pop country crossover hit, but uh, it's a very welcome return for the trio. Um, 
and this will be available in 16-bit CD quality. Um, so maybe you know maybe they'll they'll give us a 24-bit down the line. Um, next, we have a never-before released album from Art Blakey and Jazz Messengers, Just Coolin'. This album was recorded in March 1959 in uh, Rudy Van Velder Van Gelder's living room studio in Hackensack, New Jersey also home to uh, Riverside Square Mall and White Mana Burgers, if you're familiar with the area. Uh, so this features a short-lived version of the Jazz Messengers. Um, it's got Art on drums, Lee Morgan on trumpet, uh, Hank Mobley on tenor sax, and Bobby Timmons on piano, and Jamie Merritt on, basis, on bass. And this was a few months before Wayne Shorter would join on, on sax. And this one is coming out in 24192, so that is gonna be one you're gonna wanna check out tomorrow. Uh, next up, we have Zara McFarlane, Songs of an Unknown Tongue. So this is the fourth album from a British kind of like soul jazz singer. Um, and this is being released on Giles Peterson's Brownswood Recordings label. Uh, and this is just another fantastic release. It, it blends um, you know, kind of like traditional uh, textures with mo modern rhythms. Um, you've got like these electronic grooves layered over like steady percussive beats. Um, this one will be available in 16-bit CD quality. Um, another one coming up, uh, The Pretenders, Hate for Sale. This is another record that was originally scheduled for the spring that got delayed. Um, this is the 11th album from The Pretenders. Um, and what you should do is go on Cobuzz and take a listen to um, the second track. It's called The Buzz, and it will transport you back to 1980 uh, when they released their debut. This is a great like throwback to that you know early 80s Pretender sound. Um, and this will be out in 24-bit as well tomorrow. Um, and then I thought I would just kind of mention, uh, you know, briefly mention a couple of other releases for tomorrow as well. We've got um, a new one from uh, Jarvis, which is Jarvis Cocker, who used to lead Pulp. His new one's called Beyond the Pale, and that's going to be in 16-bit. Uh, from a, an, a young Oklahoma singer, songwriter, producer named Samantha Crane, we have A Small Death. That's gonna be out in 24-bit. It's her first album in three years. And um, the last three years for her have been filled with a lot of uh, trauma and injury and just like, you know, a lot of like personal setbacks. So um, this is kind of a, uh, you know, an album all about that period. Um, we have an expanded version of uh, Roger Eno and Brian Eno's uh, Mixing Colors that came out earlier this year. If you haven't checked that out, uh, it's a wonderful release. Um, but now we'll have the expanded version tomorrow. Um, Nicholas Jar, his, uh, he's an electronic artist. He's coming out with his third album of this year. You know, we're still in July, so who knows how many more albums he has in him for 2020. Um, we have the fourth volume of Mozart uh, Piano Concertos from uh, Cyprian Kapsaris, Yunguk Lee, and the Salzburger Kammer Philharmonie. Uh, the first three uh, editions are available on Kobos right now. And also for tomorrow, this is kind of uh, exciting news, but I can't really be specific about it, but we're gonna have a big catalog drop from an unnamed artist. Um, uh, the catalog's coming in, in high res, uh, which, and it hasn't previously been available in high res. So uh, we're expecting it tomorrow, so look for it then. Um, and yeah, it's another you know brilliant week of music and definitely check it out on Kobas. So Jan, thank you so much. I really, uh, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's talk about one more thing that you weren't that were prepared to talk about, but you know me, <laughs> I will pull that kind of stuff. Hey, let's talk about music gifts a little bit. Ah, yes, music. Yeah, gifts. great. Thank you for bringing that up. So, music gifts is uh, Co Buzz's uh, summer music giveaway. Um, we have uh, a selection of seven titles that we are offering to you for free. You can go to the page, you can download one, you can download two, you can download all of them. And basically this is our way to say, you know, we appreciate the fact that music is a part of your life and continues to be. We want Cobas to be um, a source of music and comfort for you. Um, so this is starting, uh, this started yesterday. Yeah, and we'll run for a month. So um, 
The uh, link is right up there. Just go there and download your free music. What is better than free music? Yeah, thanks, Sujan. That, that I love that we're doing this kind of thing. We've been uh, we've been doing little special projects together for you know for a while, uh, promoting um, uh, promoting as much free music as as we possibly can. The really cool thing about the the music gifts is you don't have to have a subscription to Cobuzz. You could just go there and get it. This is when we say music gifts, it's really a music Perfect. gift. So. Yeah. Sue Jan, thank you so much for for coming on and uh, and joining us, and uh, we'll be looking forward to the the next time. We're going to bring back Mark and and Matt now, and hey, have a great afternoon. I know uh, Thursdays and Fridays are your busy time, so they are. So thanks again for joining right. us. Take care. Take care. All right, we got Matt, and we've got Mark. Hey guys, fantastic! So, I love. I love the ECM catalog. You know, I'm a big jazz fan and you know, I, when, when you guys were talking about the new releases and I got up and I went into my vinyl um, little crate back there. Cause I have some prized vinyl in there and I got this a while ago uh, at the behest of my bro who introduces me to a lot of music and it, some of it becomes demo material, but this ECM um, piece, Manu Kachi for you drummers. Okay. What a tasteful album. And then of course, you know, as I'm digging through, this was a while ago. I'm like, is it on Cobas yet? And it was of course in 24 bit. I don't know if you guys can see that 96. No, it's a little so, bad, that's okay. <laughs> contrast. Hmm. So anyway, but I was like, Oh, I haven't even put the record on. I'm like, I'm not, gonna go through it right now i'm just gonna listen to it in high res over here you know but it is so delicate and precise the sound stage the recording quality if if uh, some of the listeners are looking for some new jazz check it out it's fantastic it, i mean from start to finish the way albums used to be you know intended to be listened to not one track here and there but the whole album you know just wonderful so excited about the catalog the growing catalog on cobas i get excited about it I'm usually an album guy. Uh, when I say album, it's either I, I still do vinyl uh, or or uh, or Cobus. Typically, Cobus just because it's so much more convenient to to use. But yeah. as far as being an album guy, I, I typically I'll start at number one and and I muscle through the whole thing. I I I like that whole. Some of these albums, you know, tell stories. So many of them tell stories. Uh, I was just listening to. Um, lamb lies down on broadway the other day and it's like oh my gosh it's like what a story but regardless if it's got a uh, a storyline or not i typically am i'm a straight through kind of guy i'll listen to the whole thing well that's a body of work as the artist intended it right i mean do not underestimate the power of sequencing you know there's a reason that certain songs lead out and lead into other songs i'd love that idea of the concept of, of putting songs together as an artist to be able to release out into the world, but you want people to hear them in that order because you are either telling that story or you're taking them on a sonic journey where you're introducing stuff at the beginning and in the middle and the end. It is, it is a storytelling, even if it's just a musical one. Um, I didn't even talk about this to begin with, but, but I think it, it certainly, uh, bears mentioning we're, 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 uh, Klipsch has, uh, graciously, <laughs> offered to uh, give away a pair of speakers and they're their newest speakers. They're called <laughs> the fives, uh, which I am really loving the way you guys are keeping up with technology because this is a, a speaker that's designed um, really, I think with a lot of the way that people listen to music today. Can you tell us a little bit about the fives? We're going to be giving away, by the way, the best question is going to end up winning these speakers. So sharpen your pencil and 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 let's get asking these guys some great questions. And I will do my best not to be paying so much attention to Matt and Mark and and concentrate more on the questions that are being asked. However, if the questions aren't asked um, during if they're I'm sorry if they're not answered during the uh, live stream today, uh, myself. Uh, Mark and Matt, we're going to go back and we're going to make sure every single question uh, gets answered. And uh, we, we thank you for your for your interest. But this is the uh, fives. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about these guys. 
Well, this slide right here, five stars. The five's got five stars. That's kind of convenient. Uh, yeah. From our, our friends at Digital Trends, who don't hold back, by the way, and they do not dole out five stars regularly. It's kind of a rare thing. Another reason why we're excited. But, you know, this this is not... This is not uh, a typical powered loudspeaker. You know, one nice feature is it's got uh, the HDMI capability, um, which allows you to have a powered pair of speakers as an alternative to a soundbar. And of oh, course, there's an HDMI input. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's all kinds of inputs. I was asking yesterday about the phone. Did did it have a phono input? It, it does. does. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys were saying, but I didn't even think to, to ask if it had an HDMI input. So they're mm -hmm. powered. Uh, uh, both drivers, I think yesterday you told me, have got their own amplifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. and how are you guys, how are you guys uh, crossing them over? What's the technology behind them? In the digital domain, uh, that's basically where everything resides. You know, the crossover networks, any, uh, well, the amplification, of course, the final stage, but uh, crossover networks, uh, dynamic equalization, that is selectable. So as a pair of loudspeakers, they're optimized, the amps are optimized for the drivers. Um, and keep also in mind that there, there's not a passive network to push power through. So the power is equivalent to, I mean, when you consider the power available for the pair, it would be like a conventional system with about 600 watts per chance. I mean, total power, you know, maybe 300 per chance. The point is the efficiency of the system and the dynamics they deliver absolutely defy their size. This is like something that um, when people first hear these, they're not going to believe this is coming out of a compact package. And those are some of the huge advantages of the digital technology built in, not to mention the direct digital input from a PC, for example, uh, not to mention Bluetooth, the phono input, line input, optical input, all these digital and analog options. But it's also high resolution in the, its digital decoding. So if you want to stream from your computer or your 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 uh, smartphone or whatever, you're, you're going to um, basically benefit from from um, the high quality and high resolution built in into the loudspeaker. But also the digital technology is really utilized to optimize the performance in ways that may not be possible with a traditional external amp and passive speaker. So we're squeezing bass extension out of this system while it also maintains low distortion and great dynamics, but doesn't misbehave. You can't blow them up, turn them up as loud as you want. They're going to self-manage. Um, so one of the speakers has the four channel amp built in and then this uh, proprietary cable goes to the other speaker where it's uh, actually four conductors for the high frequency and the bass driver. And then of course you can even hook up an external sub, control it with the remote control. It has a automatic uh, filter that engages when you plug in the sub. And then the base contour is even adjustable. You can make it like a studio monitor flat, or you can have um, the rising low frequency response. So from your perspective, I guess it would be, right? So anyway, you can have the dynamic base equalization that adjusts based on the volume level. That can be with the satellites by themselves, or even with the subwoofer engaged. It's kind of like a built-in variable loudness curve, which is convenient for low level listening. We know that not everybody is cranking or DJing with this system all the time. So lots of flexibility, but that's what digital technology is for. I mean, lots of control, fantastic performance, and then of course, flexibility. So Matt, go ahead. Well, the thing I love about it is it, there, it's like a Swiss army knife um, of, of high res audio. Um, basically it will deliver this very impactful um, dynamic experience, but you know, on the back of it, it's everything from optical to, to USB in, um, the, the HDMI arc is amazing. Um, because when they're hooked to your TV, then your TV can control the volume of the fives as well uh, through through the arc. Um, so they're really, really a versatile system um, for anybody who who needs a l more dynamic range and more impact than a soundbar or a desktop system that will just that'll blow your mind. So I've, I've been really happy with them. The ones over my shoulder here are getting ready to be installed in the studio as we speak. Right now, they're going to replace the sixes, and we're going to give we're going to run through their paces. So I can't wait to get them hooked up here and start making music with them. Yeah, Felicia asked. Uh, I, I think you've already actually gone through uh, a good bit of this, but uh, Felicia just asked. You know, who is the uh, who's the, the 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 perfect user for the fives? What would they be doing? And I think what I'm hearing is like you can use these in a in a lot of different ways. 
She yeah. really can. I mean, the music lover will be happy. Any Cobuzz enthusiast is going to enjoy their high resolution playback, their low distortion, and their great dynamic range. <laughs> Sounds like a commercial almost, but you know, <laughs> it's real. It's real. And when people, I mean, some of the viewers, they've they've they have their hands on these and they're like, wow, you know, this is a Klipsch. You know, the, the Klipsch brand is not uh, <clears throat> taken lightly. You know, if it's if it says this oop, on the grill, it means something. It means it holds to the standards that Paul Klipsch established. We talked about that earlier. But this is also for the AV enthusiast. I mean, to have a pair of stereo speakers separated where you get a fantastic soundstage, because sometimes this one system has to do it all. Bluetooth from your phone, ARC from your TV, if you want to set up a turntable by your television, I want to see that. But you know what? Exactly what might happen in the dorm room, a nice dorm room, you know, computer, turntable, phone, TV, connect it all and enjoy fantastic soundstage and Klipsch dynamics. We were uh, uh, at the um, at the uh, shop uh, at, at Klipsch. Uh, this is what we were talking about to begin with. Uh, earlier in the uh, live stream, Dan and I, and uh, Dan, can you uh, can you pull up the uh, Forte system? That um, yeah, there it is, right there. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, let Dan and I listen to this because we were. I, I was just telling him, I'm going. You know, Mark, I really want Dan to hear um, a clip system that is really well set up. Do you, do you have anything in the building like this? And so Mark, uh, you know, he's, he's ready for anything at any time. And his answer to us was absolutely, of course. So we go into this room and it's got these fortes in there and, uh, Mark starts playing all of this unbelievable music on these things and dan and i are sitting in these two chairs and we are like totally flabbergasted we cannot believe we had just gotten finished with i can't remember one of the shows where we're out listening to crazy expensive speakers we we get a taste of what clips sounds like when they're really really well set up and i gotta tell you both of our experiences uh were very very similar we 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 still talk about this visit and how incredibly well these speakers sounded, um, and I am not easy to please. I am I'm I guess I would be a a snob, a hi fi snob. Um, being a sound person my whole life is I it's just something that I'm accustomed to. I'm ready for stuff not to sound right, and I'm ready to be going. Oh wow! I wish the mid bass had a little you know, finer Q at 60 cycles or something, but there's usually always something. These speakers totally blew us away in every way. Uh, so thank you for that experience, Mark. You did a great job setting these up. Well, I got to tell you, Dave, this is like the worst room in the building. It's got these weird curved walls. Acoustic. Yeah, we noticed that. Nobody, nobody in their right mind would put a system in here. It but was you're not in your right mind. <laughs> Case in point. But this was originally a reception area for the engineering floor. And um, we moved the reception area uh, when we moved in the building. And then this open space, we kind of had product statically displayed. And I was like, you know what? For a lot of the employees coming in here, let's take the mystery out of some of the heritage product and let's have an active system. So I contacted Billy Wright, my good friend uh, at Carry Audio in uh, the Carolinas. And, and you know, he he... He sent a wonderful system, the CAD 805 monoblock class A uh, amps. The, the, the pre-driver tube is a 300B. So these are, and, and these are fantastic amps. I mean, class A power, they're massively heavy and they're 38 watts with an 845 drive tube. And then you can take the negative feedback and turn it to zero, which is how I have this set up. And of course the power supply and the preamp on the top there it's funny because there's a CD player. Don't even use it. You know, I'm using a Blue Sound, a Node 2 now, you know, and I'm streaming Cobas in there now, which is really convenient. But this is this room is is not a great room at all. But that was also to, to demonstrate how, you know, the clips really are designed to deliver this soundstage in imperfect environments. I mean, it's reflective, but with the control directivity focused in, you can see they're towed in. They deliver the soundstage in spite of the room and the challenges and 
um, you know, we played everyday music. We didn't play any really weird stuff. I mean, you know, we, we don't like to play the audiophile test disc and stuff like that. We play real music that people can purchase, own, love, and it's pop music. It's popular music. It's popular jazz, whatever, vocal, you know, rock, whatever. And I, I think the key to our visit, when you, when you guys were visiting Klipsch and we just had a wonderful day because you trained us on Kobas, you trained the sales team. It was a great day and everybody was really fired up after that. We were just having fun listening to music. I mean, we're talking about music and we kind of got lost in it. And I think that was what you said earlier, you know, a great system will just kind of, you stop scrutinizing and you just start enjoying. And, and Kobas lets you do that. It's, it's wonderful where I can be in the back and I can select the tracks that I know will have an impact and I can control volume and I can select them. It's just, it's so, it's wonderful to do that as uh, for, for work, of course, but then at home, of course. And, and, you know, we all live this stuff 24 seven. I'm looking at you two guys going, I'm humbled, you know, cause you guys take it to the HNL, you know, whole nother level, you know, but, <laughs> but, you know, we love it. And, and, um, you know, everybody out there who loves music and, and wants to uh, kind of forget things, you know, that are going on outside the, you know, just all the craziness going on and just maybe shelter a little bit with music. It's, it's a great way to do that. But when you guys are with us, I'm so glad it happened when it did, because, uh, you know, then of course things change our travel restrictions and all that stuff. So I am so glad you guys were able to come to Indy and just see how the team works together and, and how we also work with hope because, you know, Royal Delgado can't, can't have this session without mentioning Roy, you know, who yeah, throw is, up the, uh, anechoic chamber, uh, uh, photo, please, Dan, uh, that would be awesome. Cause it's got a picture of Roy on it. Take it away, Matt. <laughs> yeah, this is a really cool place. Dan and I had a good time in here. While Dan's pulling this up, I'll, I'll tell a little story about uh, what was going on during our uh, during our visit. I had to take a call. We're maybe 30 minutes into our, our listing session, and I, I, I had to take a call. And the call probably lasted, I felt very rude, but the call probably lasted like 25 or 30 minutes, maybe a little longer than that. Um, when I finally finished, I'm going, okay, I got, I got to get back in there. I wonder what these guys are doing. I've just left Dan in there. He, you know, just met Mark. I, I felt, I just kind of felt bad. So I, I hurry back in to the, to the uh, listening room and it's like, I didn't even have to be there. <laughs> Dan's just sitting there listening there. Well, can you play this? Well, how about this? So can you play this? It's one of those sessions you think we go down rabbit holes when we're talking you should see us when we're the, the rabbit holes we go down when we start listening to music it's crazy but here's a couple of the uh, anechoic chambers that uh that that uh that clips uses right now matt why don't you uh why don't you tell us a little about this sure sure so in 1983 um we established uh, an anechoic chamber in our engineering facility in hope arkansas anechoic means without echo and echo um, and so what it, what it allows us is a test environment for us to be able to measure the speakers and remove the room. So you don't hear what's what the, the reflections of the room, um, any corner loading, any of that uh, crazy stuff that happens where the room contributes to the sound of the speaker. So you can really measure stuff um, as it truly is uh, delivering the audio. Um, so the, the anechoic chamber that was built in Hope in 83 was designed by Paul Klipsch himself with Jim Hunter, um, who is now the curator of the Klipsch Museum of Audio History in Hope, Arkansas. Um, hey, Matt, be before you keep going, just what is an anechoic chamber? So, it's, yeah, it's a, it is a room that is completely free of echo. Um, a good a good way to describe it is you can walk into this room and the only thing that you hear is what is um, the actual sound producer. Um, so it removes the sound of the room, it removes the room reflections, it removes anything that the room would, itself would do. So you're, you're measuring the, the, the speaker in sort of this, um, you know, uh, almost a vacuum space. Um, and a good way to describe it is when you walk in there and you um, uh, clap your hands together, all you hear is the tick of your hands hitting, you don't hear the reverberations against the wall. I like to describe it as, and we have recorded bands in this room before, it's not advisable, um, but I would put, uh, if you want to mic a snare drum, you put the mic on the snare drum in a loud environment. In the anechoic chamber, you can put the mic 
30 feet away and it still only picks up the snare drum because there's nothing else for it to reverberate. You don't get any room. So it's a great way to measure. It's a great tool to have to measure our speakers to be able to tell what they're really doing without uh, and removing the room. So there's a couple of shots of that. One of uh, Roy Delgado in the and the one in Hope. And then we have a, a, a sister to it, a twin, that when we built the Indianapolis Design and Engineering Center uh, here, uh, we built an anechoic chamber that matches it. So both of these anechoic chamber, chambers, from what I understand, they're exactly the same. They are exactly the same. And they have a patented revolving door. Um, the rotating door is three tons that sits that was on cool. a truck axle, um, basically to spin it around. That gives us um, different uh, wall configurations because you can't measure a clipsch horn. Uh, it has to be put into the wall, into the corner to be complete because it uses the walls uh, uh, to complete the horn to, as an extension of the horn. So that's a, it, it, you can revolve the door and it has different barriers to be able to uh, fix the speakers to depending on what type of speaker, whether it's an in-wall speaker or a corner horn or a standard speaker. And you, you guys have even got like little mini, uh, don't you have like mini uh, anechoic chambers as well? Or is it just the... the we have a half space. That's well. what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. I think you were showing us that when we were when we were there yeah. last, Mark. For measuring the drivers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think Dan's pulling that up right now. I think there's a a picture of this thing. Oh wow! I cannot believe this. It is already five oh one. I can't, I can't believe, believe it. it. Oh my! We God. have a ton of questions. I'm I'm just now scrolling through them. Yeah, well, you know, why don't we just, uh, why don't we go ahead and answer a few of the questions that are there? I can't see them because I'm not there. Uh, Dan, you can throw a few of them up on screen that, that Mark calls out or, here we go. What's your favorite benefit of these powered speakers compared to a traditional receiver setup? That's a great question. We already kind of talked about, I wanted to actually show the 4Ks and the way that you had the mono block set up there to begin with. So that's definitely the first advantage. You've got your amplifiers literally inches away from your drivers. You don't have any loss out of that speaker cable. That's why the very best speaker systems in the world are set up with monoblocks. Uh, the best systems, I should say, are set up with monoblocks. G give me a couple of others. I'll throw one out there. If uh, you know this company was founded on efficiency, and if you've got an amplifier that is designed specifically for that driver and all it has to do is drive that one driver that it knows very well what that driver does, then it can drive it the most efficiently. It doesn't have to do anything else. It doesn't have to drive multiple drivers or doesn't have to uh, deal with different kinds of speaker configurations. It's uh, very efficient. Cool. We've got another kind of cool question from Todd Gordon. Hi, Todd. Thanks for uh, thanks for checking us out. Way too subject subjective <laughs> for album choice. What is your favorite artist to show off the clip? Do you have one? I mean, that, that's a mark. That would be impossible for me to answer, dude. But, it, that question will make my head explode. I so can't narrow it down. So many. Hey, look, do this. Um, Go ahead and go to uh, codebuzz.com. You can get a free, uh, you can get a free 30-day trial to it, and then just pull up clips. That I think will give you. They've got two actually. They've got a reference uh, uh, playlist and also a um, heritage heritage playlist. A uh, heritage playlist, and that'll give you a really good idea, yeah. Todd. Plus, they've got a, a number of albums that sound great on their speakers, um, and and yeah. little song choices out of each. That would make my head explode as well. Here's another one from Michael uh, Lazar. Maybe a dumb question. Nothing's dumb, Michael. What are the benefits of a horn tweeter? That's a that's a very that's a great question, one that we really didn't even cover. So, what are the benefits? Well, I'll just jump in real quick. You know, everything about this is about low distortion, dynamics, efficiency, control directivity and smooth frequency response and smooth transition between the high frequency mid-range pattern and the woofer. You know, a secret of uh, the crossover frequency selected in a clip system is the dimensions of the driver, the woofer, and the approximate dimensions of the horn. It's at that frequency they transition and it's seamless. You won't hear a difference in the polar patterns Okay, and that's why it sounds so coherent. So there are so many advantages. I couldn't possibly cover it in 30 seconds, but uh, we can explore it a little further. And it's really a basic tenant of 
Klipsch design philosophy. So uh, we we could spend a, we could spend thirty minutes on that. But it's also why Paul Klipsch himself selected uh, horn design and compression drivers because he knew that was in objective measurements the lowest distortion approach between direct radiators, planar speakers, dynamic drivers, dynamic drivers, you know, behind a, a phase plug, compression phase plug. And, you know, in the case of the K horns, um, exponential horns, this is a Tractrix hybrid, which is a combination of flare shapes in, in one optimal shape. It, it, it really is in depth and it's really hard to give a quick answer to that. But we love that question because it is unique to Clips, fairly unique. I mean, we're, we're one of the have, few companies. We're going to have part two of this. We we yeah. decided to begin yeah. with, when we started talking about this yesterday, we're going, there is no way we're getting through this thing. <laughs> There's no way we're getting through <laughs> this no thing way. in an hour. There's just too much to talk about. So we're <laughs> actually going to have Matt and, uh, and uh, Mark back in two weeks, but we're going to have one other really special guest uh, Jill uh, Escrow is going to be joining us uh, from from Klipsch, and we hope you guys uh, can come and and talk with uh, with Jill. She is an absolutely fascinating lady, and um, she, it's not like she's just someone who works at Klipsch. She's a big audiophile herself. She actually has Klipsch horns, Klipsch horns in her in her place, right? Yes. She, yeah, how cool is she, that? I cannot wait to see that system and talk to her about that a little bit. She, she selected her home floor plan in specifically to place her clip horns. And, you know, she might even say, well, I don't know if I'm an audiophile. She loves music. And that is a distinction we have in the company, you know, not too wrapped up in the gear, really, really into obsessed with music. Like we, we, had, a, we had just a great question a second ago. And I think it's, we're just almost getting caught up on, on terminology here. One of the guys, I, I Dan put it up a second ago, but mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions was, um, are the fives meant for people who are not audiophiles? I, I think they're just for music lovers, right? Just answered it. Yeah. 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 I, I, it, it, the thing is, is I, Audiophile is such a weird term. I, I can I can be an audiophile, but I don't have to be, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I the, mainly, I'm a music lover, and really the only thing that defines an audiophile is someone who is like, they want the the gear to reproduce um, as closely to uh, reality as possible. Yeah. Reality is not possible with any gear, period. But when I'm listening to music, I just want it to sound as good as it can possibly sound. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get cold chills when I walk in the grocery store and Ode to Billy Joe comes on or something that just, you know, really does me, right? But the fives are something that you can have audiophile performance without spending audiophile money. The whole system will run you like 800 bucks. Or if you're lucky enough to to win these uh, today, they'll, they'll, they'll cost you nothing. But I, you guys you know, David, take this from here. Because yeah, that, you know, David, I would I would add the other the other thing that I think is a, a nice parallel um, between our two companies is, you know, audiophile in the old days, and I'm dating myself a little bit here, used to mean uh, a difficult setup, or you had to be a little bit of a, a of a person who knew about AV gear to be able to pull something like that off. What's great about the fives is you can pull them out of the box plug them in, super simple, and you have this incredibly immersive, impactful experience. But that's also what we're seeing with Cobuzz too. You pull it up on your phone, you hit play, and there's the there's a new album that came out today and you're hearing it in high res. It's not pull out the record, clean it, put it, put the, the needle down. Now I'm, I have a turntable and I love that system as well. My Fortes are, are with a, a great turntable and a match system and everything. But the, uh, the idea of being able to just the convenience of, of this, I think takes that barrier down that That's you no it. longer have to have that, the, that audiophile branding. If you're a music lover, you can appreciate it. You, you, if our, you combine uh, one of our guests, uh, sorry for talking over you, Mark, but I just wanted to to acknowledge Ryan, uh, who said something I think fairly wise. It's like you know, once you do hear an audiophile system on your favorite music, it's just hard to go back. It, it's right. it's very much like listening to high resolution. Once you listen to it, once you get a, you figure out what it's all about. Um, it's it it's uh, it's hard to go back. 
if you combine convenience with quality, you know, the hook with MP3 when it came out, what was it back like 20 years ago, 2000, you know, the MP3 players, you know, you could jam all this music on a device and compress the heck out of it. You know, digital wasn't used to maximize sound quality as ma maximize, you know, packing, right? But now you've got convenience and quality that's embodied in Koba streaming. It's embodied in these, you can't, I mean, to assemble a system for 800 bucks to do what these can do, you'd be hard pressed. So you're having convenience and quality in one package and flexibility, which you mentioned, Matt, and you mentioned, Dave. I mean, it's, I mean, what year is it? 2020? You know? <laughs> Worst year time. ever. <laughs> and it's, it's finally time. caught up. It's, it's finally caught up to what Paul Klipsch actually wanted it to sound like. You know, I love that, that, that now we have that convenience on top of it. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, I listen. You, we, we can keep going, but we're going to have to end the live stream. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to thank Mark Cassavant, and Matt Sum Summers for for joining us in our live stream today. Uh, you guys have been awesome. This has been so much fun. I can't wait to go into part two. We're doing that in uh, two weeks from today. That'll be the the thirtieth. We're going to be doing it at the thirtieth at the same time. So we hope you'll join us. Uh, we will go back and, and uh, make sure that we answer all of the questions that we've uh, that you've you've answered. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, for now, we are going to end it. So from uh, the Cobuzz side, adios from Klipsch. Thanks, Thanks Dave. for having us. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. You rock, Dave. Appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man.